Welcome back to our cyber the channel dedicated to helping you pass the certification exams that you need to move to the next level. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscription button down below and the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss any episodes. We're carrying on through the CISSP. We are on domain four, network security and communications. We left off with VLANs. Remember, they are on the switch at layer two. They break up the broadcast domain into several collision domains. VLANs are especially helpful when you need to isolate traffic from another. For instance, you want to separate HR from the IT department or put the executives in their own individual VLAN. This also helps with troubleshooting. You can identify if there's a problem in a particular set of addresses in a particular VLAN rather than dealing with one large flat network and trying to isolate a problem that way. Next, let's talk about TCP and UDP. TCP is a connection-oriented protocol. It provides reliable transport from end to end. It, to establish a TCP session, you need a successful three-way handshake. The three-way handshake consists of a SYN, a SYNAC, and an ACK. Then there's UDP. UDP is a connection-less oriented protocol. It's kind of fire and forget. There's never a concern as to whether or not the packet actually reaches its intended destination. Most all of your streaming formats are going to be using UDP. For instance, you're watching me right now using the UDP protocol. As we begin to put it all together, we deal with LANs, WANs, and MANs. A LAN is an internal organizational network, either segmented up using private IP address space like natting or padding versus a WAN or a wide area network is how one organization will then begin to talk to another across the internet. Most of the MANs or metropolitan area networks that you'll run into these days has to do with your cell phone. If you have a cell phone that is LTE capable, LTE is an offshoot or really actually kind of the same thing as WiMAX. WiMAX is just putting together in a big MAN or metropolitan area, a wireless network for your phone to use. That's all LTE is. As we decide how we're going to apply addresses to our hosts on our network, we need to determine whether or not we're going to use static IP addressing or DHCP or a hybrid of both. Static addressing means that the administrator is going to assign a particular IP address to a particular node one at a time versus using DHCP, it allows for dynamic addressing. Anytime a node attaches to the network, the DHCP server from a predetermined pool of addresses will supply that node with an IP address. That brings us to Wi-Fi and MPLS. You are expected to know and understand the different standards of Wi-Fi, A, B, G, N, and AC, as well as the different encryption technologies associated with Wi-Fi, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. Let's walk through each of them briefly. WEP was the original encryption standard used for wireless networking. Uh, however, WEP at this point is considered depreciated. It used the RC4 cipher and an IV to supply connection from the wireless node to the wireless access point. Next came WPA. WPA kept the RC4 protocol, however, it replaced the IV with TKIP or the temporal key. However, WPA is also considered depreciated at this time. That brings us to WPA2. You have two options with WPA2. You have personal and enterprise. The only real difference between the two is now instead of using RC4, we are using AES as the encryption protocol and you will have either a shared key or a radius server. WPA2 Enterprise requires a radius server for authentication, whereas WPA2 Personal does not. Next, MPLS, or Multi-Protocol Label Switching. 
simply the mechanism that directs traffic from one WAN interface to another WAN interface. MPLS, ATM, Frame Relay are all usually configured in a hub and spoke configuration across the internet. Next, iSCSI and VPNs. iSCSI is most often associated with the SAN, however there are some other practical applications. It's designed to provide disk access over IP. The key advantage of using iSCSI is you can use the existing copper wiring inside the facility. However, you need to ensure that you've allocated the proper bandwidth within the organization. Now, VPNs, or a virtual private network. They grew in overall popularity because of the expense of leased lines or ISDN lines. With a VPN, a virtual private network, you can carve out a little piece of the internet to call your own, setting up an end-to-end -end encrypted tunnel for your data to flow through from one location across an untrusted network, like the internet, to a corporate office, for instance. Some standard protocols used for VPNs would be like PPTP, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, L2TP, layer two tunneling protocol, Ike, the internet key exchange, and SSTP. This brings us to the next logical discussion of SSL and TLS. Within the CISSP body of knowledge, you are expected to understand the core differences between SSL and TLS. So let's walk through them briefly. SSL was the original protocol designed and maintained by an organization called Netscape. One of the core tenets of the Netscape organization was that data should be freely exchanged across the internet. However, the protection standards should also be free. When Netscape went out of business, SSL was taken over by the Internet Consortium. They renamed it TLS, or Transport Layer Security. You have three versions of SSL, SSL version 1.0, version 2.0, and version 3.0. And then you have three versions of TLS. TLS version 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2. 1.2 is the current standard of TLS that you should be using on your networks today. For instance, if your organization has a PCI DSS requirement, it mandates the use of TLS version 1.2, not SSL. Well, that's going to do it for part two of domain four in the CISSP. Remember, if you like what you see here and you don't want to miss a single episode, hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon. And now we are happy to announce that we have a Patreon page. You can go to Patreon and pledge your support to help us keep making the videos that help you get to the next level. Just head over to patreon.com slash rcyber. The link also down below. Remember, as always, visualize success and you will succeed. I'll see you next time.